Hi, my name is Melissa Rohr, and I chose to do my presentation on epigenetics, but I figured a little bit of genetics explanation would be necessary before really getting into that. So, what exactly are genetics? Well, they are the scientific study of heredity. This means that our inheritance is determined by genes passed on from generations. Genetics can actually help humans understand how we develop. Again, I'm just going to go over some basic concepts of genetics, just to make it easier to understand epigenetics. First and foremost, what is our DNA? Basically, DNA is used to carry all of our genetic information. So, everything that was passed down from your mother and father will be present in your DNA. Genes are the inheritance of our biological characteristics. This is what is in our DNA. Chromosomes are the chains of genes that we carry. Each human has about 46 of them, or 23 pairs. Alleles are what we use to understand our genes. They are different forms of a gene. Some are dominant, while others are recessive. These can be expressed by using capital or lowercase letters. A dominant allele covers up recessive forms. An example would be a capitalized X, and that would mean tall, for example. A recessive gets covered up by the presence of a dominant allele at all times. So an example of that would be a lowercase x for short. So basically, alleles are just used to show the difference between our recessive and dominant genes. Uh, the Punnett Square is basically just a tool designed to organize our traits and to predict the probability of genetic crosses. Our homozygous sets have two identical alleles for a trait. For example, if a capital T represents being tall and a lowercase t represents being short, if the Punnett Square determines that the offspring will be produced a capital T, capital T, or lowercase t, lowercase t, it is known as homozygous because both alleles are either capitalized or lowercase. Heterozygous traits occur when one parent provides a dominant letter and the other provides a recessive allele. A phonotype is just the physical word for the trait. This is just an example of the Punnett square to give you a better understanding. Notice that the dominant allele is always represented first. This is how we can determine the probability of a child receiving a certain trait. Say that the capital A equals brown eyes and the lowercase a represents blue eyes. The probability of a child having brown eyes is three-fourths because three out of the fourths of the square have a capital A first, which is the dominant or brown eyes. The probability of having blue eyes is only one-fourth. All right, so here we begin on epigenetics. Why did I choose this as my topic and why do I find it so interesting? Well, we'll find out. What are epigenetics? Epigenetics is the study of heritable changes in a gene, expression, or cellular phonotype, and it is caused by mechanisms other than changes in the underlying DNA sequence. The epigenetic theory is an emergent theory of development that includes both the genetic origins of behavior and the direct influence that environmental forces have over time on the expression of those genes. The theory focuses on the dynamic interaction between these two influences during development. You might be thinking, how does our DNA change? Well, it doesn't, but think of it like this. The expression of our genes is what causes the different effects. Environmental influences range from things that we lump together under nurture, such as parenting, family dynamics, schooling, and neighborhood quality, to biological encounters such as viruses and happenings in cells. Everything is set in advance by genes and then is gradually manifested in the course of maturation. Well, what exactly could this mean then? We all know that the conditions you face while in the womb have a great effect on your life. It turns out this never stops. Even in late adulthood, a change in an atmosphere can affect the way we alter or develop. Many studies have been done specifically on identical twins to justify this theory. Uh, trials. So researchers initially used cloned mice to help understand the process of epigenetics. Uh, they would feed pregnant mice different substances. Some were fed environmental toxins, while others were fed nutrients. And the ones that were fed toxins became fat yellow mice, and the ones that were nutritious were skinny brown mice, even though they had the same exact DNA. 
After this research, they chose identical twins to see how close their genetics and epigenetics were. They took the DNA from patients ranging between 3 and 73 who were identical twins. They then amplified the DNA and compared them. The 3-year-old's epigenomes were very similar, while the 50-year-old twins were very different. Uh, this slide is just showing the comparison between two different sets of twins. As time progresses and each twin lives their lives more differently, you can see how much their epigenetics have changed. The yellow color expresses the similarities of their epigenomes, while the contrasting colors show differences. These changes are what initially begins different health problems or disorders. Alright, so the epigenetic theory. With this theory, scientists have designed a therapy. The idea is to change the instructions of the problem cells and the epigenomes and reactivate the positive gene. Basically, what they do is they alter the targeted epigenome to act like the gene that they are supposed to by creating a personalized treatment. This therapy has seen great success, sending about 50% of child patients into remission. The outcomes have many factors though, just as any trial would. Um, these factors do affect the outcome. For example, this treatment may not work if the patient was too far along in their cancer or other illness to reverse it. If you look at the chart on the screen, it shows you kind of the steps or the process that uh, scientists use to decide whether a person is right or wrong for this therapy. Uh, here are some clarifications or I guess me repeating kind of the main ideas of epigenetics. Basically, uh, your DNA does not change. Epigenetics just offer an explanation about the stable alterations in gene expression potential brought about by some random change or an environmental change. Uh, it is a fact that genes are unchangeable, but it can be controlled. Um, it simply implies that inheriting a particular gene may be inevitable, but the outcome depends solely on the expression of the gene. In the process of gene expression, physical modifications to DNA may happen due to some external factors. As such, the genes adapt to its environment, turning on or off particular traits to surface. That is why it is wrong to think that when your parents may have some hereditary disease, then you are to experience the same. If you take care of your health and manage your lifestyle very well, prevention of occurrence of these kinds of diseases is still achievable. For instance, if a man is already predetermined to be tall due to his genetic makeup, but he may suffer from some malnutrition and lack of physical exercise, it may hinder him to achieve his predetermined potential stature. Basically, genetic and environmental factors significantly influence the gene expression embedded in the human's biological system. It cannot replace the fact that natural selection still takes place in the processing of DNA, but it controls actually how it shows up. Hope that helped. Okay, so why was I so interested in this part of human development? Well, because I kind of lived through this whole idea. My mom is an identical twin from Idaho, and there have been so many differences in their adult lives. Both of them dealt with alcohol abuse, mostly sought out for negligence of their families, and this carried on for too many years, and both of them have become extremely sick. My mom, who moved here to New Mexico, never got better. My dad, being a teacher, she had to work a lot to get us by, and she's dealing with way too many health problems, I can't even keep track. And my aunt, whom I've actually never met, lives in California with a successful husband, no kids, but is still sick, just not as nearly progressed as my mom because she has less stress factors. Also, depression and alcoholism runs a long line in my family, and I like knowing that I have the greatest influence on how that trait will affect me. I've placed myself in wonderful communities, and I have no sign of depression or alcoholism. Here are just the works cited that I used. Um, I used a lot of the information from lecture as well as I used uh, the two articles and the video that they posted on WebCT. Well, that's all I have for you guys. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope I didn't bore you too much. And I apologize for my voice. I've been a little bit sick, so I hope you can understand me as well. And I hope you have a great summer.